What's up guys, Joey here if you got tech, and if you've been reading the news lately, you've definitely heard of Starlink, a satellite internet constellation being constructed by Elon Musk's SpaceX. It's currently limited in some parts of the US and Canada, but it's now making some noise here in the Philippines due to its possible entry. But what else do you need to know about this potential internet service provider? Don't worry, we got you covered. First thing, what is Starlink? What's a satellite internet constellation? Well, Starlink consists of thousands of small satellites deployed in low Earth orbit and works in combination with ground transceivers. For a quick history, product development started in 2015, two test flight satellites were launched in February of 2018, then in May of 2019, Starlink deployed 60 operational satellites and has continued to launch up to 60 satellites at a time since then. And as of February of this year, a total of about 1,000 satellites have been launched. By late 2021 or 2022, SpaceX's goal is to deploy 1,440 satellites to provide near-global coverage. And by 2027, Starlink is planned to be a constellation of 12,000 satellites with the potential to expand to 42,000 over time. You get the picture. Elon's goal is basically to deliver broadband internet literally all over the world. Now, going back to the present years, Starlink began its private beta in the northern US in August of 2020 with a public beta beginning in October of the same year. It's initially available for users in the US and Canada, but obviously with the amount of planned satellites, a planned global rollout. You can actually check if you're in an initially supported area by going to the Starlink website where you can pre-order the service if you're in a supported area. As of the writing of this video script, Starlink's internet service costs $99 or around 5,000 pesos a month. The hardware though is a one-time purchase of $499 or around 25,000 pesos with a shipping and handling fee of $50 or around 2,500 pesos plus taxes of course. The Starlink hardware kit includes a satellite dish, Wi-Fi router, power supply, cables, and a mounting tripod. The tripod is designed for ground-level installation or to support a quick setup to test your connection. For users that require a roof installation though, Starlink also offers roof mounts. During setup, the most important part seems to be the field of view. SpaceX explains that if you could actually see the connection between your Starlink dish and a Starlink satellite, it would look like a single beam between the two objects. As the satellite moves, the beam also moves and the area within the beam moves within the field of view. If an object obstructs the field of view, such as a tree, a pole, power lines, or a building, the internet service will be interrupted. This will definitely be an important point of consideration for those living in crowded Metro Manila cities that may be interested in Starlink if it rolls out in the country. Another point of consideration is that you cannot travel with your Starlink kit or move it to a different address. The location where you initially set it up will be the assigned area where the satellite in space will send an internet connection. If you move outside that area, you will lose internet connection. That simple. Heavy rain or wind can also affect the connection, which is yet another thing to consider for us Filipinos due to the severe weather conditions we endure at times. Now as for speed, beta users are currently expecting to see data speeds of 50 to 150 megabits per second and a latency of 20 to 40 ms. However, the company has said that speed and latency will improve as they launch more satellites, install more ground stations, and improve their networking software. Now, what you guys are really interested in. Starlink in the Philippines, what's gonna happen? Information is still currently limited, but what we know so far is that Starlink is in talks with Converge ICT and some government officials, most notably Senator Grace Poe. However, in a letter sent to the SEC, Converge affirmed its stance that it is still premature to talk about a possible partnership with SpaceX at this stage, but also said that the latest satellite technologies, including Starlink, are among the new technologies being explored by Converge to bring high-speed broadband to far-flung areas of the country. And this is just speculation guys, but the potential Converge SpaceX partnership could heavily revolve around the fact that Converge actually operates an Earth station, which is essentially a huge collection of radio equipment that allows communication between us on the ground and satellites up in space. Starlink could possibly beam its internet connection to Converge's Earth station, which can then deploy connectivity through fiber cables on the ground. 
Again, speculation, but totally possible. Yet another concern for Starlink rolling out in the Philippines is price, of course. 25,000 pesos for the hardware alone with 5,000 pesos a month on top for the actual internet service? Pricing is pretty steep for us. Unfortunately for us, Elon Musk recently tweeted that the price is the same for all countries with the only differences being in shipping and taxes. However, to be fair, this isn't without reason. When asked to consider offering Starlink at a lower price in developing countries, Musk said that SpaceX, and I quote, needs to pass through a deep chasm of negative cash flow over the next year or so to make Starlink financially viable. Senator Grace Poe, an author of the Better Internet Act, also echoes this pricing concern but said that that's not necessarily a bad thing because there's probably a niche market that will be able to afford this technology. And we're also looking forward to that. In the future, with more subscribers, the cost will go down. And that's about it, guys. That's all the information we have so far about Starlink and its potential rollout here in the 7,641 islands we call home. It's not gonna be for everyone, but it could open a lot of prospects, especially for the most remote, unconnected areas of the country, allowing people living in those areas access to the internet. It also opens up the possibility for city folk like me to move to the beach or move to the mountains and still get work done. So that wraps it up for this video, guys. Let us know your thoughts about Starlink in the Philippines in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like, subscribe to our channel for more content, hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads, and be sure to visit yugotech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. Again, this has been Joey, and I'll see you guys in the next one.